Hey what's up everyone. For this shot I want to improve those nice looking autumn colors. That means I'm giving those green tones a little more of an orange color tone. But besides that I'm also using two images to blend them together since the highlights in this base image are way too overexposed and there's no way to recover them from this file. So there will be quite a bit of editing involved here. I'm going to do the basic stuff in the camera raw editor. Then I'm switching over to Photoshop to do the rest and I'm probably also going to use the Nick Collection plugin to finalize the image. So let's get started. Here we are in the Camera Raw Editor and first let's head to the Optics tab to remove Chromatic Aberration and apply some Lens Distortion right here. Then back to the basic stuff for the camera profile, I'm going with Adobe Landscape as this will give me some more base saturation and I think that works nicely with those bright autumn colors. For the white balance I'm simply going with Cloudy. This will make it a little colder but also makes it look a bit more natural. Since I'm going to blend two images I'm not touching settings like exposure highlights, shadows, whites or blacks. Instead I'm just applying some negative texture to give the image a softer look. Also I'm adding a little clarity. And then let's also add some vibrance. And that's already it for the base adjustments. Now as you can see down here, the image I'm working on right now is the bright image of those two. That means I want to make sure that the shadows are nicely visible. And right now this area in the foreground does look a little dark. So here I have applied a radial filter which I want to use to increase the exposure slightly. And I could add some clarity for some more detail, but that's really about it for the local adjustments. Now let's do some color grading in the color mixer tab. I want to start in the hue tab, since as I said in the intro I want to kind of make those green tones a little more orange. And I'm simply using the green slider here and drop them. Also I can drop the yellow tones. And this way we get a nice looking autumn shot. In the saturation tab I want to drop the orange saturation just a bit. Then let's boost the yellows and let's drop the greens. I think that looks pretty nice. Okay, I'm not going for the split toning this time. So let's go straight to the sharpening. All right, and that's the editing for my base image. Now I want to copy those settings to the other image. So I'm selecting both of them, right click, synchronize settings, and then making sure to check all and hit OK. Now this shot basically has the same settings. I need to adjust a few things here. For example, I don't want to have this radial filter in the foreground, so I'm getting rid of it. And in the basic tab, I'm going to drop the highlights some more. So I'm making sure to not overexpose them at all. So once that's done, I'm going to select them both again and just open them as an object in Photoshop. Next, to be able to blend those images together, I'm dragging this dark exposed layer over to my other image. Let's align them real quick. And I can close this one. Now at this point usually I would use the TK panel to blend those together but Photoshop actually has something similar. So let's apply a layer mask right here. And with the layer mask selected let's head to image and then apply image. And you can already see Photoshop is applying a layer mask and tries to blend those images together. That means I don't have overexposure in the highlights while I still have nicely visible shadows. Sometime in the future I will make a video about this apply image setting since it's quite complicated. So let's skip the explanation for this window right here. I'm not 100% satisfied with this layer mask so I'm going to adjust it manually a little bit. Therefore I'm holding down the alt key and click on the layer mask to make it visible. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool 
and I'm setting the mode to overlay and let's increase the opacity a little bit. Now with overlay and the black foreground color, I can simply brush over those parts without affecting the white parts of the image, which is really, really helpful in this case. And by brushing with black over it, I'm going to reveal bright layer right beneath it. That means the shadows will get a little brighter this way, while this won't affect the highlights at all. All right, that looks good to me. Then let's merge those two layers by selecting them and hitting Ctrl E. And next I want to get rid of a few things here, so I'm using the spotty link brush. And I just start to remove a few objects. Okay, that should be good for now. I want to apply some glow in the brightest areas, therefore I'm using a new layer and switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, I'm grabbing the brush tool, let's reset the brush mode and drop the opacity some more. I have set the foreground color to white and now I'm carefully painting in a few times. All right, that should be enough. Then I'm going to apply another new layer, but this time let's go with the overlay blending mode and this way I can use this layer to dodge and burn on this image. Now with the white brush I want to make a few areas a little brighter, like this tree here. Let's just brush over it like this. Okay, maybe the foreground as well. All right, looks nice to me. Then finally, it's time to use the Nick Collection plugin. So first, let me merge those layers again and then go to filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. Now I could actually use the Indian Summer filter to enhance those odd colors even more, but this effect is really, really strong. So let's see, I think the third preset looks pretty good, but let's drop the enhance foliage a bit. All right, that looks nice. Now instead of applying it like this, let's add another filter and this time, let's see what the polarization filter does. It boosts those colors a little more. So let's use a rather low strength in this case. All right, then let's add one more filter. And this time, let's choose the classical soft focus for a dreamy look. The first soft focus method is a bit too strong in my opinion. So let's go with the third one, but I'm also dropping the strength since it's quite heavy. All right, I need to add a control point to get rid of this effect on some areas, like in the foreground, since I want this area to be sharp. All right, nice. Then let's apply it like this. And at this point, I want to stop the editing. So I hope this was interesting and helpful. If you have questions left, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.